In what can be such a hard knock industry, what is the mindset that you try to keep and how has that mindset changed as you grew as an actor and as you now continue to grow? If you are not a self-starter, if you don't have that personality, that this business is going to be really difficult because so much of this business is what are you willing to put into so that you could get back. So we got to, uh, this is my, now, now we're in interview mode. Okay. So thank you. Uh, hello. Thank you for joining hey. my interview today with me. I have Eddie Ramos. You may recognize him from some of his work, such as Eraser Reborn, Bunker, Teen Wolf, and Incorporated. Eddie nice. graduated from Syracuse University, which also happens to be the city where I was born. Since coming to LA, he has made a reputable career as an actor and an entrepreneur. He runs an acting coaching business called The Modern Actor. And as a successful businessman and a notable actor still on the rise, the future holds amazing possibilities for Eddie Ramos. So, Thanks, David. Of course, of course. Uh, <laughs> first question, I said, what, what got you into acting? And when was the moment that you knew this is what you wanted to be? Uh, it's, it's, I mean, I can remember it like yesterday, I was probably 10 or nine or nine or 10 years old. And, um, I, I had always been a performer. I was always entertaining like that kid in, um, you know, grade school. Uh, I, I often say because I was shorter in my class, I was one of the shorter boys. I was always in the front and I feel like being in the front of a school line back in the day. And, and you're, you're pretty tall. So you may not remember this or know this, but like, I feel like I was always the presenter, presenter of our class or our grade. Okay. And anyway, I don't know, man. Okay. I don't know if that identity kind of like triggered it, but I was always into acting. I loved Jim Carrey. He was a huge inspiration as a 90s kid. You know, seeing Macaulay Culkin do Home Alone. And, and we grew up with such great like Nickelodeon actors. That stuff was just in my mind from a very early age. And I was lucky enough to do, uh, my mom signed me up for an acting class in uh, Times Square. And through that acting class, they were doing like an open call for an off-Broadway play called Rags. And I booked the lead role for that. So right away at, at 10, 11 years old, I was an off-Broadway. And once I got on stage and my friends were coming in, I mean, it was a huge house. Uh, I, I got bit by the acting bug, you know? So it was, it was just on my mind from a very young age. I didn't go to LaGuardia or any like performing arts high school. But even throughout high school, I played baseball. I was on, you know, the student council. I was also taking acting classes and, you know, in every play in my school. So it was always like, who wants to be the, in the play? And the hand was raised. Like, it was a no-brainer for me. And then, like you mentioned in, in the intro, I uh, ended up getting my BFA at Syracuse University. So then I did four years uh, getting my theater degree there. And as soon as I graduated in May... I came out to Los Angeles. I just always knew that Hollywood was going to be the thing that I, where I wanted to end up and being on TV and film. Okay. Was there a moment where you were like, okay, like for me, sometimes it feels like I'm not an actor yet. Was there a moment for you where you really sat there and you're like, okay, like I'm an actor. Like, and what was like that moment for you? You know, it's funny. Like, I think I've always considered myself an actor. Like, even when I was nine, I mean, being off Broadway, I mean, oh, yeah. like, you know, so many actors like hope to do that. And but but to be honest, like even in acting class, you know, being with my friends playing zip, zap, zap, <laughs> I just had the identity. I was like, I'm an actor. Like, I, you yeah. know, it wasn't, I'm acting. I'm an actor. It, maybe it, to your point, I guess, like, when did I maybe it was when I first got signed by my managers. Um, you know, Syracuse does this great program. I'll plug them. They do it a great program when you're a senior called Sorkin Week. And it's named after Aaron Sorkin, you know, uh, the guy who wrote West Wing and The Social Network. Okay. So yeah, Moneyball, right? Um, and so he went to Syracuse and he basically flies out 12 seniors. They get, you know, they select 12 seniors. And I was one of that bunch they fly you out for free, all expenses paid. And during that week, you're meeting uh, industry professionals, agents, managers, you know, casting directors, mostly people that were associated with Syracuse in some capacity. Mm -hmm. And through that, um, I got signed by my first manager. I was the only student from my group to actually get repped out of that week. We were just coming here to, you know, learn about the industry. And it was 
the moment I remember being like, I made it was driving down Sunset Boulevard to go to this manager meeting, whatever that meant, right? I remember preparing the night before, like they wanted, I think they wanted me to do a monologue, do a commercial script, and then like maybe even a scene and then obviously bring headshots. And um, it was that moment that, you know, seeing the billboards and now that you're in Cali, like you understand what that feels like this industry. I mean, this city is Hollywood. And I think when I landed here, that's when I knew I was like, oh, I'm an actor. And, and then getting signed and then getting repped. And it was like, yeah. That's so of course booking. That coming out of college. Yeah. yeah. So dope. Yeah, it was great. It was great. I knew, I mean, we all went back and I remember being like, oh my God, I just like could not stop talking about California or Hollywood. Like I had never <laughs> been. It was the first time. Exactly. It was just a, yeah, yeah, exactly. Like back to Syracuse. Did, exactly. Did you go back to Syracuse. Was it like around like, was it cold there? Was it, was it this like where, like around when it was warmer? So actually it's, so in your senior year, you split the year, the first half of the year, you're still like the first few semesters, you're still in Syracuse. It's your last hurrah. And then the program is great. They bring us to New York. It's called Tepper semester. So mm -hmm. I think we were, it was already spring break. So I was already in New York. And that's another great thing that Syracuse does is they immerse their students into the city. So even through there, we're going to Broadway shows. Again, we're meeting passing directors. I mean, it is a great program for, you know, kind of helping actors launch their, um, I would say more so theater careers, but they definitely now I know for sure have a great like on camera um, uh, uh, track as well for their students. Okay, that's dope though. Yeah. That's dope. yeah. So my next question is, what goals do you still want to accomplish as an actor? And what goals have you already accomplished that would seem not unrealistic, but like seem very like high reaching goals, like that nine, 10 year old kid that was doing off Broadway. What have you accomplished and uh, what do you still hope to accomplish? Well, I will say that I was very fortunate, very lucky to book my first like guest star role fairly quickly. I, I even want to say that Teen Wolf happened for me within the first year, within the first six months to a year. Again, I was, and exactly, like I was again lucky because of my special circumstance to get a manager before I even got to LA, I was already repped. So I didn't have to come here and like duke it out and like go to, you know, workshops or anything like that. Like I was repped with a manager and through that I got my agent. So as my first goal, I booked that pretty fast. I had representation very fast. And then the next goal, I guess, on the next part of the ladder would be to book a job, not just like a short film, but book something on a reputable network. So I was on MTV within, you know, Teen Wolf within six months, a year. And then, you know, then from there, we, I, I to the day, it was two years to the day that I booked Incorporated. So that's a series regular role. Um, for Matt Damon and Ben Affleck. I mean, that was to the day, it was like J July. And I remember my, because my dad was like, I'm going to help you for the first two years of your career. I'm going to pay, you know, I think he paid half the rent. And then I came up with the other half. Mm -hmm. And I remember that was just like the only thing driving me was that I can say, hey, dad, I got this from here. You know, I, I wanted to be able to do this thing on my own and not keep relying on my parents who were so great, gracious to support me. But you know, I just didn't, I, I just don't come from that mentality of like, I'm going to just keep using my parents. So it was the only thing on my mind. And I got lucky enough to book that freaking series regular. And when oh, that, that came, dude, oh my God. Oh, he immediately was like, I got it, this. Yes. I'm sure he was like one of the first, like three people, <laughs> you know, there's nothing better than getting the call from your agents. And you're just like, I'm sure I was like in tears, just being like, I, you know, you, you just like can't believe it. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, we talked about this the first two years of an actor's career. It's like there's so much energy, there's so much, um, you know, good vibes going into it. There's so much, you know, tears and and rejection and and just you know uncertainty. And so to make that call is one of the greatest feelings. So I feel like as an actor, I've accomplished so much. Um, okay. yeah, you know, like. I, Film, being on a movie, being a lead on a movie was one of the things I wanted to do so badly. And in 2021, I did Eraser, like you said, in, in South Africa as a supporting, but it was a big role. And okay. then I got Bunker. Yeah. Oh, thank you. Yeah. And then and then got Bunker right after as a lead. And we filmed that in Buffalo. So like in terms of the accolades, I, there are still obviously things I want to do, you know, I mean, who doesn't want to win an award? Who doesn't want to be in an Academy Award winning or nominated movie? I would love to be part of, 
you know, teams like, you know, a Scorsese team or opposite a Leo or opposite, I mean, are, are the actors we love, right? So there's still like people that I want to like work with, but in terms of like the things that are on my resume, I, I can be, I can look at it and be really, really proud. Um, now the goals are more so like business goals. Now the goals are, I want one of my clients to book their first series regular role i want to you know what i mean like yeah like that's now like that's what i'm looking for i want to grow the business i want to um you know get the word out there of the business and things like that so like you know get more more recognition from the industry itself to to the classes and things like that so i got more like business goals sorry yeah no no i appreciate that like yeah since like it was already it. like it was already there in like the beginning, like when I when I started doing the modern act, that's how this interview yeah. is happening, by the way. I uh yeah. I am a member of the modern actor, if that's the way to put it. But yeah, the modern actor community, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's it is it's definitely been taking like leaps and strides. The website has come a long way. Yeah. Very, you. very yeah. professional, especially because like I'll look up like acting classes coming here too, and like silly, like a lot of them look for lack of lack of better phrasing, look look jankier than the modern actor website. And I'm like, dang, Eddie's really yeah. Eddie's really doing his thing. So yeah, see you on that. And, yeah, thank you, man. And thank you for saying that. And that only comes from being a working actor. So like I anytime I work on the business side, I always come from it like if I'm David, if I'm one of my clients, if I'm Eddie, like I if I am still an acting student, right? Like I still go to coaches myself and we've talked about some of those. So like I look at my business from the eyes of what would attract me as a as an actor, what what would get me inspired, what would get me to like jump off this janky website, right? And how do I keep people? So I think it was a no brainer for me to go into coaching as a business. Um, sometimes I think, God, I wish I could just sell pots and pans. It would make my life so much easier. But I love <laughs> coaching act. Yeah, it's what I know, right? Like it's what I know. It's my bread and butter. So yeah. Okay, well, I'll move on to the next question. Um, Amen. I said, in what can be such a hard knock industry? What is the mindset that you try to keep? And how has that mindset changed as you grew as an actor and as you now continue to grow? Yeah, um, I always tell you guys that Hollywood's not knocking on our door. I mean, to there's a lot of luck that has to go into it. But the mindset is also so crucial because the first sign of rejection, it takes out so many actors, you know, so many people don't have that, that thick skin. And I don't know if it's, you know, growing up in Queens, New York, that gave me, you know, and you as a New Yorker, I always say like, my East Coasters, we kind of have that chip on our shoulder. And I don't know if it's the weather, right, that, that grit. Um, but I, you know, I, yeah, I just will say that if you are not a self-starter, if you don't have that personality, that this business is going to be really difficult because so much of this business is what are you willing to put into so that you could get back, right? Like I was working at CVS and, you know, during the pandemic, I was doing Postmates. Like how humbled will you go or get so that way you can, you know, get the things that you're you're striving for, you know, and I and I think if you're not willing to get down in the dirt and and feel days where you're eating freaking rice and beans, like then you know it, it's not entourage, it's not glitz and glamour, like that's the perks of the job. That's not the job itself. So if you're not willing to do the job itself, which is auditions on the weekend and traveling back and forth to classes, like it's yeah. gonna be really hard. And I think I was just I, I have that in my bones, yeah. Oh yeah, I definitely think that uh we do get a little not not a not a uh not a benefit, but I definitely think there is a type of uh, East Coaster grit that definitely yeah. definitely helps me out here a little bit. But, yeah, I think so. Good. Yeah, and I will say you appreciate all of the what the West Coast has to offer you because we're from like the East Coast. I think we like we definitely don't take it for granted. Like every day I'm blessed when I look out and it's blue skies. I'm like, okay, today is a great day for me. There's no reason why I can't memorize these sides or you know or get these headshots done right it's not raining it's not snowing like mentally i'm clear i'm good to go and so that was also one of the reasons why i moved out here because i knew how hard it was going to be in this industry so i wanted to kind of clear the deck as much as i could so that i could thrive you know and and my environment is so important on that okay well this one this yeah. question is actually not scripted but this just came to my um mind yeah, yeah. I, I seen in a recent interview between Martin Scorsese and Timothy Chalamet, 
Timothy Chalamet mm-hmm. talked about coming from New York to LA that he mm-hmm. he felt a sense of, and I think Martin Scorsese, I want to say he agreed with him on this, said that he felt sort of his edge or like his that that East Coaster grit that we talk about kind of not in a way deteriorating. Have do you feel like you felt that at all? Or how do you keep that grit? Like how do you keep that extra chip on the shoulder, that extra grit, that extra driving force like in your gut? Like how do you keep that sustained and healthy? I I'll be honest, I I still drive the same car that I had since I was 10 years ago. My car is is 12 years old. And of course I want a new car and the thing just will not die. And once it does, I will get a new car. But like, it's it's some of those things that I keep as little reminders of you're not big time. You're not Hollywood. You're not like where you want to be just yet. Right. Keep grinding, keep hustling. Right. Like, so there are certain things that I'll, I'll keep in my back pocket as little reminders. Um, obviously things that remind me of like, you know, certain little posters, that's like a short film that I did is the posters up there. That'll remind me of like, you know, yeah, these are like that, you know, that's not from like incorporate or anything, but like that will remind me like, I'll remember those times when you just did this because you absolutely love this, you know? And, um, but, but, uh, I will also say making frequent trips back home is a great way to remember a, there's a reason why you left, you know, like there's a reason why I left New York and it'll always be reminded when I get there. It's just like, you know, certain things, but um, I often feel like I need a dose of New York. Sometimes I need that energy. Um, it, it feels like a, like a freaking like, um, like a, like a bolt to the system. And so, especially when I first moved out here, I needed it quite often. I needed to go back to New York just to kind of feel the energy, feel the, that grit. And then I would come back to LA and be just so super focused, so hyper focused. Yeah. Um, I don't do it as much as, or I don't need it as much now, but definitely in the beginning of my career, I think it was really important to to always touch base back to my roots. Oh, that's, that's good advice. I'm actually excited. Tuesday, I get to fly back to Maryland because that's where my family lives now, but get to go exactly. back. A little bit. Also, because we were just talking about blue skies and stuff, and I love the weather here. I think it's around like two days out of the entire time yeah, I've been here this semester. But it does yeah. also at the same time, it doesn't feel right Christmas being like 75 degrees outside. So I'm excited. Uh, to you'll, get, back like, you'll get used to it. You'll get used to it. You'll get used yeah. to it. <laughs> but okay, yeah. so my next question, this is kind of a um question that's coming from what I've been not um questioning lately, but it's something that's like kind of I never worried about before since coming to LA. And now it's kind of like something that's been creeping into my thought process about my future career as an actor. The question is, as an actor, do you ever worry about your branding? Do you ever worry, like, because mm. I, I know that's been taught, like, watching, listening to ad, acting podcasts, listening to people who have experience in the field talk about it. There's some people who are just saying, like, don't worry about your branding, just put good content on the table and stuff will unfold for you. And then I have other people who are kind of like, not be like picky with your roles, but it's kind of like how you're perceived by the general media, especially when you're starting yeah. off, it's going to affect your career trajectory. So I'll answer that like that two part question. I think that perfection is like they say, the perfection is the enemy of good enough. And I think perfection also will stop so much of your natural creativity, your natural instinct to play because we want it to be perfect. We want our, I'll just use Instagram as an example. We want the grid to look so good that I won't just put the monologue that I just on a whim decided to record tonight because I got inspired. And so I won't put it out there because my brand or my Instagram profile just feels or looks a certain way. So yes, I think we don't want to hamper our creativity because of this brand. I think part of your brand should be that you are free to play, that you do have the ability to improvise, the ability to try new things. I think that's such a, a thing that we need in this in this creator culture, in, in just acting in general. We want to see our actors have fun, right? If this feels like really serious, if this feels like this is so hard, it's just like, okay, like I, I, I don't know if I'm going to enjoy that person's things as much, right? Yeah. Um, and uh, and so and then again to then answer the other brand question like we talk about this in our class um, I think one of the mo- more important things to think about is if something feels like it's going to go against who you are I think 
if you're still figuring out your brand, that's fine. Like whether you're into cars, whether you're into working out, whether you're into health, like that you can come together. But if it's something that goes against your core, certain things like stereotypes you don't want to play, right? As a Latin actor, there's a lot of that, right? Um, you know, different things, uh, religious things that, you know, go against your, the, your convictions. I think that's pretty important to kind of nab and, you know, nip in the butt um, pretty early on in your an actor's career. You know, like what are the things you're willing to do? And what are the things that are absolute no's? Yeah. And then from there, that can help you define your brand, you know? Okay. Okay. That's, does that make sense? Yeah. That's, yeah. that's it. Like I'm, I'm just thinking is I, recently I just watched, do you watch the, um, it's in season right now. They're actually still started coming out, but the variety actors on actors interviews. Yes, of course. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So there's just, there was a thing coming out and I, I was the Mark Ruffalo and Robert Downey Jr. One that just came out and they were kind of talking about, how Mark, Ru Mark Ruffalo, he has very strong points of view and convictions about like um, the state of the world, like the political climate of the world and like all this right. other stuff. And in the movie coming up, Poor Things, apparently he plays like a very um, self-centered, like narcissistic, misogynistic, like kind of like character by nature. And Robert Downey Jr. Right. asked him about kind of like that, like that's not something that I see you like acting or like putting out there into the world. And Mark Ruffalo, he kind of like explained it as kind of, I don't know, I don't want to, maybe I'll just have to watch the interview because like he explains it in like a very poetic, very like Mark Ruffalo way that I don't want to like diminish yeah, by trying yeah. to articulate it. But he basically sure, just, sure. He, he like found like ways of the character where it's like, maybe it's just like for this character specifically, but like aspects of the character that he thought would be something that the world needed to see right now, even in part of like the bad parts. So like this kind of made me think yeah. of that also at the same time, but- and I I think there's a distinction too between type and brand. I think brand obviously constitutes more about who the actor is outside or behind the screen. Okay. And like to Mark Ruffalo's point, right? Like his brand is like, he's political. That doesn't mean that every character he has to play ha has to be political. Like, you know, the Hulk isn't political. Yeah, so, type, right, like, like, whereas Robert De Downey Jr. is saying, oh, I couldn't see you playing that character. Maybe that's more to what his type is. He's kind of nerdy. So he's not someone that plays narcissistic or full of himself. Mark Ruffalo is always kind of the bookworm. So that's a distinction. There's a distinction between okay. type or brand, right? Like Leo is brand is all about saving the planet, right? But his type, it's not like he plays only those kind of characters. Yeah. Okay. You get what I'm saying? Like his type is different. Like so that's there's a distinction between a personal brand and the type of characters that you can play or your actor type. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Huh. Does that make sense? And then, yeah. and then with this is also like also I just can't script it. But then would for type, do you ever worry about what your type is? Or is that kind of something that is like deemed upon you by other people or is that something because i know we talked about i'm sure we talked yes about yes i think an actor should always be self-aware and i think an, an actor who's not self-aware is doing themselves a disservice right so if you look a certain way if you've been told certain things that you can play certain or, and also just look at the numbers if you get called in for you know uh boyfriend roles a lot but you still want to keep playing the you know i don't know jockey best friend or for, for whatever yeah. then you're kind of playing against your type if you keep getting called in for these boyfriend roles it's something that you should be aware of i'm not saying only play to that but like know that it is part of your wheelhouse and it probably is the thing you do really naturally and if acting is all about like not trying and just being then really paying attention being self-aware of like what are the roles that i always get in for when i just send a headshot like yeah. what do i not even open my mouth and people think that about me right and so a lot of acting schools will do that exercise where you'll step in front of your class and everyone will say oh he's like he can play the hero he can play the nerd and just just being just knowing knowing that like that's how you walk in the room that's just knowing that's how you kind of present yourself i think is really important for an actor it helps with headshots it helps with signing with agents and the more specific you can be the better of a career the more specific your career can be as well so okay. i think um yeah that that would be my take on it yeah okay see. well this is yeah. i'm actually uh, gaining a lot of insight from a final project so there we go. But now we're on, I'm, I, yeah, <laughs> we're on the uh, final question now that I have scripted. Um, I said, I've heard quite often that it is the hardest to get in, the, in acting and everything. I heard a lot of people make the, I, I don't think analogy is the right word for it, but kind of like 
the saying of it's really hard. It's harder to get from zero to one than it is from one to two, two to three, three to four. And I was yeah, wondering okay. what was your experience and like reflecting back on it, what have what was your experience and what have you learned at that time where you were still trying to get from that zero to one? And what advice would you give me now that I'm standing in the spot of trying to get from that zero to one? Yeah. One of the things specifically for you, David, as my student, as my friend, I think your zero to one man is believing that you are an actor. And we, you like, you keep bringing this, even your question, like, when did you consider yourself an actor? I know this is something that we spoke off camera about, you know, about like, uh, you know, uh, like, do you think you can ball or anything like those? Like, I think that's your zero to one is, is having enough confidence in your, um, your skills to know that you absolutely are an actor. You absolutely can ball in this profession. You know what I mean? And then I get, I think then afterwards, the two to three, the three to four, that's going to come easy, but it really takes a lot of confidence. I think in performers and so many performers don't have that confidence. And the zero to one is like climbing Mount Everest. It really can take a long time. Um, and I just always had that belief in myself that I knew I was in the right room. At least I knew I could compete. I knew I, um, I needed to be here. I knew that that was something that I I, I believed in uh, wholeheartedly. Um, so that would be the zero to one for like, I think most people want to hear that is just about having that, that belief in themselves, that confidence right. to plant their flag in the ground and say, yes, I am an actor. Okay. Once you can say that with a straight face and look at yourself in the mirror, the two to three comes really easy. I, I, I promise you that. Yeah. Okay. And I, so then another add on to this question is how, well, it sounds like from from you, you kind of always had this strong like sense of not purpose, but it sounds like you always like you walk in the room being like, "This is where I'm supposed to be." I think coming yeah. from because we moved New York, but then we moved to Maryland, where it's like not really much was going on, and now I'm here, and it it, it feels I don't know, it feels like other people are maybe not like craft wise, but kind of like career wise are like steps ahead of me. And then I have like instances where um, I talk to people. It's like the, in this class, we had the industry professionals come in and they asked me like if I actually could compete. And when you have like people asking you those questions, how do you from like within, like obviously not like screw you, but like not like that type of thing. But like, how do you how do you be like, like, yes, I can compete when it seems like like you said, Hollywood's not coming to your door. Like no casting agent is going to be like, oh, wow, look at this guy. Like we really need him. How do you have like that kind of like from within being like, yes, I can. And I can show you that I can. Like, how do you have that? Like that strong sense of like, yet yeah, like, yeah. I don't know the word for it. Denzel, but, like, yeah. Denzel talks about once, I don't, I don't mean, whatever you want to call it, God or the universe. But once that voice gets whispered into your head, that hey, man, this is what you're going to do. That's what puts the wind behind the sails on a performer, on an actor. And I got to just say, like, I don't know when it happened. I don't know when I heard, like, when I watched The Mask for the hundredth time. Like, there wasn't a moment where it was like, oh, that's what I'm going to do. It just, one night, that's the next day, I was like, that's what I want to do. That's I, I want to be a performer. And then, so from that, that that lays the foundation, right? The why, the purpose, as you just called it. But then I always go back to my resume. I go, I have a video clip of the little boy who's nine years old talking about Hollywood. I have, you know, I watch the playback and it's, it's cringeworthy at times, but that's the stuff that I can fall back on and be like, I've proven to myself that I'm an actor because there it is right there. I've been doing this for a long time. Yeah. So use your resume, use the reviews, use somebody be like, yo, this guy, every time David comes in for my auditions, he always blows me away. I mean, sometimes we have to fall back on what sometimes like the validation isn't coming from within and it's like, I don't feel good. So yeah. go back, go out external, look for the validation outwards. Maybe you won an award as an actor back in the day. Maybe you were told you were the best actor in your class. You are at LMU now, man. Like as a transfer student, you're doing great in your class. Like go back to those things. And those will be the things that I think we have to be grateful for. And those are the things that we have to use to 
kind of help us muster up that courage and muster up that confidence. You know, it isn't, there isn't going to be a day where it's like, unless you do get an Oscar, is it, there is no day that they're like, okay, young man, you are now a great actor. Like it, yeah. it's, it's got to come from within, you know, like it's got to come from within your own belief, you know? And um, that's what I would say. Okay. See, well, yeah. I will probably start to wrap it up so uh, I could still send in this video file without it collapsing. Uh, <laughs> the, uh, Professor DeMello and Professor McCusker who will be viewing this. Thank you for watching. Uh, keep keep your eyes out for Eddie Ramos and any future Academy Award roles. And as a businessman, keep an uh, eye out for the modern actor. Um, thank you. Uh, thank you, Eddie. Thank for you, Danny. For Thanks. taking, honestly, way too much time because I think this is supposed to be like a five-minute interview. <laughs> but uh, thank you for um, taking the time and helping me. My pleasure. All right. Anytime, brother. Anytime. Thank you.